What is up, everybody? Very excited about today's episode on the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw. Today we have UNC Wilmington newly appointed head coach to K.O. Siddle on the show. We talk about his career as a basketball player. We talk about his vision for the program moving forward. And he lets us know what emoji he is using the most during this quarantine time. But before we get started into that, if you would, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Go ahead and click the bell so you get all the notifications. And also, if you enjoy the interview, please be sure to share it across your platforms. Uh, that would be great. Um, also, too, we want to hear from you which beach you go to when you visit, when this whole quarantine thing's over and stuff. What beach do you go to and visit? Um, but without further ado, here is new UNC Wilmington head coach, Takeo Siddle, on the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you. What's up, everybody? It is Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. I am here with new UNC Wilmington head coach, Takeo Siddle. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. No, absolutely. We appreciate you coming on and everything. Uh, how's, uh, how's everything been going with this uh, quarantine and, you know, getting adjusted? It's, it's kind of a weird time for you right now. It is, but, you know, um, like I tell everybody, we're just trying to be creative with everything we're doing, you know, whether it's talking to our current team, talking to uh, future Seahawks, uh, you're trying to navigate through all aspects of the job. So we're just trying to be creative with it. Oh, no, absolutely. And you did a good job hiring a good staff, too. So it should be a very, uh, very, very exciting time moving forward. Um, so coming out of Moorhead High School, you were a three-star prospect. You averaged 27 points per game and stuff. And then you went on to play at Hargrave. What was the prep school experience like for you? Uh, it was great. You know, you mentioned before that, you know, I had a pretty good high school career. I don't know, you may have gave, given me a star, <laughs> a two-star. But, um, no, it was, it was everything to me. I, I felt like I needed some time to mature, mm -hmm. uh, both on and off the court. And I felt like Hargrave and Coach Keats was – uh, the best situation for me to do that. Um, and, you know, I was able to, to get what I went there for. Absolutely. And it seems like during this time right now, 780 whatever transfers and stuff, that for these seniors, the prep school route might be a, a very viable option. For them, what would, you, what would you suggest or what would you say? What would you tell them about the prep tell, school route? I would tell the guys that are looking, you know, looking at the prep school route, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of biased because I think that, you know, you know, you have an opportunity to go and, and not lose a year of college eligibility. Uh, you know, we talk about going a prep school route versus a junior college route. I think it's a no brainer to go prep school route, especially if you're looking to get more exposure, uh, you know, to, to get more structure, more discipline, to get yourself ready for college. I think it's an absolute no-brainer. Um, you know, it's a lot of good prep schools out there. I think when you look at high school basketball in general, I think private schools and prep schools are, are really starting to take over. Uh, there's no knock on on the public schools because, you know, we recruit public schools aggressively. Um, but I think, you know, that's starting to become a little more popular to, um, to high school guys. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and then coming out of Hargrave, you chose Gardner-Webb, uh, went there to play there for four years. What went into that process for you, the recruiting process, the decision-making, the, the visits and all that kind of stuff? What went into that, that process for you? You know, when I was looking at a place and I was one of those guys, I would have been signing yesterday. <laughs> you know, I waited until late. I wanted to make sure it was the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I had a great relationship with the staff. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure that um, – you know, it was a place that if I went and, you know, basketball was taken from me, would I still be happy at that university? Uh, I wanted to also go to a place where I was going to get a great education mm -hmm. and where people were going to be invested in me as a person. And, um, you know, all of those things factored into my decision to go to uh, Gardner-Webb, and I'm very thankful for, um, you know, them giving me the opportunity to go there and get my degree. No, absolutely. And during your time while you are at Gardner-Webb, you were part of teams who upset Minnesota, upset East Carolina, Kentucky. What were those moments like for you uh, in, in, in that time? Like you mentioned, man, you know, as an 18 to 22-year-old, <laughs> um, you know, now jumping forward to, to me now, like those are moments that I still think about. Um, you know, those are historic moments for that university uh, because, you know, when I went there as a freshman, that was only our 11th year being Division One. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of the things that we were able to do 
were historic moments at that university, and um, I'll forever be indebted to those to that place. Um, sorry about that. No, no problem. That's actually Jawan Carr calling me right now, but I'll, I'll forever be indebted to that place and to the people that um, you know that I, I was able to meet there. No, absolutely. And then it must have gone to a testament to your leadership because you know you come out, you graduate from there, then your previous two coaches bring you on staff. You go back to Hargrave with Keats, and then you go back to Holtman at Gardner-Webb, who was your assistant coach while you were playing there. Um, how, what was that like? What was it like being able to be a coach that quickly, that young, um, for guys who you knew previously at those two places that you went to school at? No, I mean, it was uh, everything to me because I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to, what direction I wanted to go with my, my career, my professional mm -hmm. career. And you know, when I went to Hargrave, it was one of those trial and error situations where I was like, you know, I want to try this out. If I like it, I'm going to stick with it. If not, you know, I'll try to find something else to do. Uh -huh. um, so I was fortunate enough to go back and work for Kevin Keats, who, uh, you know, he helped me build a very solid foundation, you know, from a coaching aspect. And um, it, it meant everything to me to give back to him and give back to Hargrave. And then you fast forward eight months after I was on the job at Gar uh, Hargrave to be able to go and work for Chris Holtman in his first head coaching job at, at my alma mater. Mm -hmm. uh, that was special to me. He took a chance on me. I was unproven. I uh, had no idea what I was doing, but he also helped me build a solid foundation and uh, he believed in me at a high level and gave me an opportunity to grow as a, as a young assistant coach. Yeah, absolutely. And within that growth, you look now at Chris Holtman and where he's at, at Kevin Keats and where he's at. You know, you were four or three years, I believe, uh, four years with Holtman, six years with Keats. What are some big things from each of them that you have taken away from them that you're going to be utilizing moving forward? Right. You know, their ability to uh, manage different personalities. And I think, you know, you're going to have 13 – you know, to 15 guys on your roster that you have to be able to, uh, you have to learn how to coach each and every one of them differently. And, uh, you know, their ability to do that was, you know, uh, something that I'll, I'll take with me uh, as a head coach at Wilmington and their ability to build relationships with not only their players, but the people that are involved in the program, that are involved in the university. Mm -hmm. um, and then their ability to build confidence and instill confidence in their players uh, that's something that I've, you know, worked on as an assistant and that I'll take with me now as the head coach at UNCW. Absolutely. And you got, you got any good Kevin Keats stories? Yeah, we can't. We can talk about that <laughs> off the record. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Kevin's an unbelievable guy. Um, so you were at Wilmington with Keats for uh, three years, 72 and 28 record overall, two NCAA tournaments there. What does it take to win at Wilmington and how good can that program become? Well, obviously, when you when you look at you say you want to win championships and you want to win big, uh, you have to have talent. You know, I would uh, be lying to you if I told you something different. But what we were able to do is we were able to recruit uh, guys who fit uh, this university. And mm -hmm. I talked about that earlier, having guys who fit the culture of the university that you're at. Uh, we did a great job with uh, evaluating uh, student athletes who are UNCW people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we instilled a, a championship mindset, championship mentality from day one. And we were able to do some unbelievable things here. We had one of the most historic three-year runs in the program history. Yep. Um, you know, so I think that, you know, we had a total buy-in. We had talented players. Uh, we had unbelievable relationships with them. They were a great fit for UNCW. And then the supporters, um, you know, this is one of the most passionate fan bases in the country uh, that people don't know about. We don't have football, so basketball is everything here. They rallied behind us and supported us through the ups and the downs. And, uh, you know, they absolutely were a huge part of why we were able to be successful. Absolutely. And now that you're moving down a seat on the bench, how will your mentality change going from assistant to head? I, I think, you know, when people say that, people always say, well, you scoot down a couple inches. I say, what if I just stay in the same seat? <laughs> I put the put my sisters on the other side of it. Yeah. So I um, you know, I'm just I'm gonna have to make the decision rather than give suggestions. You know, um, I'm always a guy that you know. I said when I was assistant, if I'm ever a head coach, you know, I'm gonna listen to my assistants. 
and uh, I'm going to help let them help me make decisions. Um, I'm going to take the same mentality that I had as an assistant coach where I was getting in the trenches. Uh, I was getting my hands dirty. Um, you know, I was on the court with the guys involved in workouts, running the workouts. Uh, I'm going to take that same mentality. Um, you know, now I got to, you know, go from being big brother um, to being a little more stern and, you know, a yeah. little more forceful with the guys. But, you know, I'll, I'll keep my same mentality. Mm -hmm. And then uh, returning, I guess, currently, you have seven of nine scholarship players are from the state of North Carolina. And you've already secured three commitments from guys that are in North Carolina, which, is, which makes around 10 scholarship guys currently uh, from the state of North Carolina. How important is it to the success of UNC Wilmington um, to kill the recruiting trail in the state of North Carolina? Always, I talk to my assistants all the time about us, you know, uh, making our mark in the state. Um, yeah. I, you know me, you've been knowing me for a long time, uh, ever since I started. You know, North Carolina, I'm a North Carolina guy. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be coaching in North Carolina my whole assistant coaching career. And, um, you know, we have a rich pool of talent every year in the state. And what I told those guys is I want to make sure that uh, we keep our talent home. You know, I don't want the guys that we're able to get, I don't want them going out of state because they don't have to because we have one of the best mid-major programs in the country uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, that's important for us to uh, keep our, our homegrown talent home. And, you know, my vision one day is for us to, you know, win a championship or win championships with five guys from North Carolina in our starting lineup. Um, you know, that's something that I dream about and talk about all the time. So yeah. uh, recruiting the state is of high priority for us. No, absolutely. And, and, and then, you know, in, in talking to these kids and everything, uh, letting them know what in your mind makes University of North Carolina at Wilmington a special place to spend your four years of college? The prestigious education they're going to get. Uh, it's a world-class education. Yeah. I want to start with that first and foremost. Then you talk about the location. You know, your campus is five minutes from the beach. Yep. Uh, it's an unbelievable place to live, un unbelievable place to spend your time. Mm -hmm. um, and then you talk, you want to dive into tradition. You know, we won six, went to six NCAA tournaments in the 2000s, um, 2017 being the most recent one. And 2016, we went back to back. Yep. Uh, we've had eight regular season uh, titles. So you talk about that, and then you talk about our facilities. And you know, I showed you around one time. Our locker room is one of the best in the state. Uh, you know, rival any any uh, locker room in the state. So you talk about all of that, and then you involve the people. Yeah, you know, people make the place. And we have some unbelievable people. You know, you talk about our Seahawk Club, um, you know, our donors, uh, the people in the athletic department, our professors, like everybody around here, are unbelievable people. And they believe in our basketball program at a high level. Um, so, you know, I would start off and talk about those things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's a great place. And when, when Wilmington's winning, the, the game atmosphere is, is off the charts. Absolutely. Um, you're hired during a, a weird time, uh, you know, down there. Getting, how are you able to get acclimated to the situation, to the players, get to know your team during quarantine? Right. So, you know, pe some people look at this as, a, you know, a bad time to get a new job. Um, you know, I'm able to go at my own pace now, yeah. you know, versus finishing up, well, being in the tournament at NC State and then – Whenever we lose, jumping right into a job, having to hit the ground running. I'm still hitting the ground running, but I'm going at my own pace. So well, that's it will be a recruiting weekend this weekend. <laughs> it will be a recruiting weekend. Yeah. So, um, so you know, I'm, try I'm going at my own pace, and that's been good for me and my staff. Uh, but, you know, with the guys, I'm just trying to stay in constant communication with them. We actually have a Zoom meeting here in an hour as a team. Uh, this is our second one. We're going to talk about a few things. Uh, related to the program, and I want to make sure that they're safe and healthy and following the uh, protocol of the coronavirus. So 
Uh, that's been the most important thing to me. I'm constantly texting him. Uh, I do individual FaceTime meetings with those guys uh, every week. Mm -hmm. uh, just trying to stay in constant communication the best way that I can. And I'm on my staff all the time. I text them every day to make sure we're staying in contact with our current players. Uh, they're the most important thing to me right now uh, moving forward. They're my players now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my job is to build a great relationship with them. And even furthering that, how are you How are you guys doing workouts or how are you setting out workouts or setting out plans and playbooks and all that kind of stuff? How, how, like, how are, how are y'all doing that? I, right now, I'm, I'm waiting until summer one starts. Yeah. Uh, that starts here in a couple of weeks. And what I'm doing right now is I'm letting my strength coach uh, just give them a modified plan. My biggest message to them was to make sure you're doing your modified plan and try to get in the best shape as you can when August rolls around, so we won't be starting from uh, ground zero. Uh, we'll dive more into uh, the structured uh, workouts and stuff like that when summer one starts. But, uh, you know, I kind of want to let them finish up with their um, semester right now, and then we'll worry about, you know, the workouts and stuff here in a couple weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then recruiting-wise, um, shift over on that a little bit. What advice do you have for players? You know, I get hit with this all the time. I'm sure when you were assistant, you did too. What type of advice do you have for players to how to stand out in the crowd? How do you, to, to somebody, let's say you're, you're at a game or you're on the recruiting trail or something and, and you don't really know who you're watching, you're just out here watching whatever. What do you say to a player to stand out? How, how, how do they get noticed by a college coach? Right. Yeah. And, you know, I'll say this, I'll say this to my players as well. You know, they're trying to, uh, you know, earn my respect and catch my eye as well. Yeah. Be yourself, whoever you are, okay, whether you are an effort guy, um, screen set or whatever, whatever it is that you're really good at, just do that at a high level. Mm -hmm. uh, don't try to be someone you're not uh, because then you start to look bad because you're not comfortable in that role. Yeah. Um, whatever it is that you do well, do that at a high level. And uh, just be yourself. That's what I would. That's the advice I would give to recruits trying to catch my eye. Yeah, I love that. That's 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 great advice because that's that's so true. So many times you hear people, oh well, he's a shooter. Well, he can't defend and stuff. Then they go try to defend and stuff, and they stop making shots. It's like, well, you know, now you're just not any good. <laughs> right, right, no question. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll wrap this thing up. Rapid fire, three questions, just you know, one word answers or whatever. Um, during this time, we're on our phones a lot. What is your most used emoji? Uh, 100 sign. <laughs> uh, are you a coffee, tea, or soda guy to get your caffeine? Neither one. None of them? None. All uh, right. You have your own late night talk show. Who's your first guest? Jamie Shaw. Oh, Lord. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, <laughs> man. Um, you got anything you want to say to Seahawk Nation? Uh, you know, I would tell Seahawk Nation, and um, since, since you guys a message yesterday, uh, make sure that you guys continue to support us. And I really do appreciate you, uh, you know, up to this point. Just continue to support us through these trying times. Make sure you stick behind our guys through the ups and downs. Uh, we're doing everything as a staff to uh, get this program back to the championship ways. Uh, I encourage you guys to stay safe. And, uh, you know, I look forward to – you guys getting back on campus, campus and cheering on Seahawk Nation. That's great. Uh, thank you very much, Coach, for coming on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, everybody, for UNCW head coach, Takeo Siddle, on the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw, thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks, Jamie. And there you have it, the Absolute Basketball Experience episode with new Wilmington head coach, Takeo Siddle. Uh, it was very good getting his insight, getting his background, talking about where things are at with the program and what they're doing. And, and there's a lot of excitement surrounding that program, as there should be. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to this podcast. Click the bell so you get the notifications. Also, we want to hear from you what beach you visit whenever you go to visit the beach. Uh, put that in the comments. would be very interested to be here. But thank you guys very much for joining in. For head coach Takeo Siddle, I am Jamie Shaw on the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you.